This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Welcome to Dr. Mar Christian Moment brought to you by the Glazov Gang. Thank you very much for tuning in and I appreciate you spending the next 10 minutes with me to discuss a very important issue. The relationship between Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Chelsea Clinton and the Clinton gang together with the Obamas to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamist movement. It's a topic that has to be it, uh, learned and educated and you have to know about the relationship before you head to the election on November 8th. This election is one of the most important election in American history. There is lots that is need to be discussed before this election. You know, there is lots of talks going on about how Uma Abdin has a strong relationship with Hillary Clinton and how Uma Abdin herself is related to the Muslim Brotherhood. You know, this is not an incident that just happened in the vacuum or just an incident by itself. You know, there is a long tradition of the Clinton relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood goes back to the Clinton era when he was the president of the United States of America. It all began in 1996. Ironically, it's the same year that Barack Obama started his political career when he was elected as a state senator in Illinois. There is no relationship between the two incidents, but the reality is in 1996, this when the White House opened its doors for the Muslim Brotherhood in the history of America. That day, Hillary Clinton invited an organization that is founded by a very shady man by the name of Abdurrahman El Amudi. Abdurrahman El Amudi organized the very first iftar in the White House by the invitation of Hillary Rodham Clinton. That day, a group of Muslim leaders attended an iftar at the White House. A couple of the attendants are very important to know about. Number one, the note speaker of that day was Dr. Hassan Hathout. Dr. Hassan Hathout is a Muslim brotherhood to the core. He, he was born in Egypt. He was an OBGYN as myself and as my dad. And he grew up in, in, in Egypt at the time of the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood. He has a very personal relationship with the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood organization. They were buddies, they were close friends, as Dr. Hassan Hathout himself said. Hassan al-Banna and Dr. Hassan Hathout were close friends. Dr. Hassan Hathout in 1948 went to uh, the Holy Land and he fought alongside the Muslim Brotherhood against the State of Israel a war that ended by the establishment of the State of Israel and the defeat of the Arabs and the Muslim Brotherhood in that war. Dr. Hassan Hathout was put in jail a couple of times for his involvement and relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the man that was the note speaker at the White House by the invitation of Hillary Rodham Clinton that is running for the President of the United States at this point in time. Dr. Hassan Hathout at the end of uh, his conversation and his speaking uh, at the White House that day, he said that if America became the way he and his followers wants to, it to be, they're going to give all the praise and all the thanking to Hillary Rodham Clinton. This is one man. Another person that was in close relationship with Hillary Clinton was Dr. Mariotti. Dr. Mariuti was and still is a physician in California. Her dad was born in Gaza Strip, Palestinian as he called himself. And he was a very good friend of another very shady person, Yasser Arafat. And he was in Egypt for most of his youth years and he continued a close relationship with Yasser Arafat until his death. His daughter, Dr. Mariotti, was a good friend of the Clintons. She was appointed by Bill Clinton to the very first official post 
into the government of the United States of America representing Islam and the relationship between Muslims and the American uh, government. She's still till today an activist in California supporting Islamic ideology and supporting the Islamist movement. She is a, a, a very strong opponent against the state of Israel and fighting the state of Israel. And let's go back to the event that took place in 1996 at, at the White House. The person that organized that was Abdurrahman al-Amoudi. Abdurrahman al-Amoudi is not only a shady person. As a matter of fact, he is right now spending time in jail for his relationship to the Islamist movement and supporting terrorism. Let's go back for a minute. He was the one who organized the very first iftar at the White House. He spoke out loud about his support to the Muslim Brotherhood and the Islamist movement right after the iftar at the White House. He supported the Islamist movement, Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and he opposed the state of Israel in every term possible. He said in Chicago publicly that America will be one day a Muslim country because of his efforts and the efforts of his fellow Muslim Brotherhood members. He was appointed by the Clintons to interview and appoint chaplains into the military and most of those chaplains has relationship in way or another to the Islamist movement and the Muslim Brotherhood. He was also introduced to the Bush family and he was a fundraiser for uh, George W. Bush. He was introduced by nobody other than Hillary Rodham Clinton as well. You see the relationship between Hillary Clinton and the Muslim Brotherhood is just not about Huma Abdin and her shady relationship with the Muslim Brotherhood. It is actually way deep rooted for decades right now. Huma Abdin, as a matter of fact, was introduced to Hillary Clinton at the same exact year in 1996. Huma Abdin was born in the United States of America. By the age of two, she moved to Saudi Arabia. I can tell you that growing up in Saudi Arabia is not a simple thing that we can just pass by and just say she was born and or she lived in Saudi Arabia. Living in Saudi Arabia has to abide by Sharia law, has to cover from head to toe, has to accept your status as a woman, as a second category citizen. No driving is just one of the symptoms of how women is treated in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia does, do not treat women that way just because they are an oppressive regime. Saudi Arabia treats women like that because they are abiding by the Islamic teachings and the exact teachings of Muhammad and Sharia law. So when Omar Abdin moved to the United States back to attend college, she was introduced to Hillary Rodham Clinton immediately. How many people got the chance when they moved back to, to the United States of America and start their college? start their college, not their career, their college. They get introduced the first lady of the United States of America. And she becomes her confidant. She becomes her buddy, her friend. Hillary Clinton actually calls her, you know, she is like a daughter to me. The circumstances that uh, surrounds Omar Abdin's introduction to Hillary Clinton and the circumstances around how Omar Abdin was bec became a very good friend and a confidant to Hillary Clinton is yet to be revealed. But if you see what was going on at that time with Abdurrahman al amoudi with Dr. Mariuti, with uh, Dr. Hathout, you can get the point. Another person that we need to highlight also is Chelsea Clinton, a young, bright woman, a daughter of a president, and a lady who is running for becoming a president of the United States of America. What an amazing childhood she had. And her marriage itself is an interfaith marriage. She married the Jewish man from the reformed Jewish movement. We have to look at Chelsea Clinton and to see her actions and what she's doing as well. She is an activist in the interfaith movement. Interfaith movement, if you look closely to it, is one of the biggest Trojan horse in America. The interfaith movement is not trying to push for peace as they try to pretend to be. But if you look at the interfaith movement closely and Chelsea Clinton leadership in this, 
when she's leading one of the biggest organizations of the interfaith movement in America and what they are doing over here. And you see the relationship of the Islamic Society of North America, Council of American Islamic Relationship, and the Muslim Student Association to the interfaith movement. You can get the picture as well. It's a Trojan horse. Try to downgrade Christianity and Judaism to absolutely nothing and to put Islam as superior and supreme as Islam, as the prophecies of Muhammad exactly says. This is not a movement of peace. This is not a movement of understanding. This is a movement of eating America from within and destroying America by their own hands as the exact terms of the exp explanatory memorandum. One thing I want to highlight as well before I go is the relationship of Omar Abdin to the Muslim Student Association and the Islamic Society of North America as much as her dad. Omar Abdin was a leader at her college for the Muslim Student Association. I will leave you with the Pledge of Allegiance of the Muslim Student Association by the exact words by one of the leaders of the Muslim Student Association himself and what he has to say. We will end with the Pledge of Allegiance. And so you will repeat after me, inshallah, Allah is my Lord, Islam is my life, the Quran is my guide, the Sunnah is my practice, Jihad is my spirit, righteousness is my character, and paradise is my goal. For I enjoin what is right, I forbid what is wrong, I will fight against oppression, and I will die to establish Islam. Thank you very much for spending the last minutes with me and my thoughts about what's going on with the Clintons. Please educate yourself. Please learn about the issues that is on the stake in this coming election. Please understand that this is not an easy election. This is not just to sit it at home. Please do what your conscience is calling you to do right now. And please support the Glazov gang. And please support jamieglazov.com. And make sure you subscribe to the Glazov Gang YouTube channel.